So I'm here with a few of my friends. I'm here with Pam, Pat, and Leslie. Thanks so much for joining me. So I just, I know there are so many businesses out there that are, are in some ways terrified of AI because it's a big unknown thing. Um, Leslie, I know you're a professor and you're the expert uh, in, in a lot of these things. And one of the things that I'm trying to do is, is define a little bit uh, AI and human intelligence and how they maybe work together. So for example, I know that there are things like um, linguistic intelligence, uh, spatial intelligence. Uh, so all these different ways that humans think naturally. Uh, how do you see AI, artificial intelligence, integrated with that? And maybe even in, in the workplace, if that's... Yeah, artificial intelligence is defined as uh, the attempt to make computers do the things that minds do. And you immediately run into a number of problems there because clearly computers are not alive, they're not conscious, they don't have a moral not compass, <laughs> they don't have feelings. I could go on. Uh, so there is a big challenge. So what we've done instead with what you call artificial intelligence is to create machines that can do some of those things quite well. Uh, for example, there are big advances in image processing, natural language processing. The speed with which these machines can operate is very often surpasses human beings uh, by a considerable margin. Mm -hmm. um, and then there have been uses of statistics to build on, um, al to build algorithms and, and improve uh, uh, how those algorithms perform by using machine learning. That's essentially where we are. It doesn't really add up to what I understand artificial intelligence to be. I Which prefer to call it cognitive automation, the point that we've reached. So that's, that's, that's a distance back from being like a, the replacement uh, or duplicate of a human brain. Yes. And all those different things that it can do. Uh, so, Pat, in your work, uh, you talk to a lot of companies about integrating some of this. And do they approach you with questions about, like, you know, their different workforces and how to understand how they can align an artificial intelligence or some kind of automation with what they're already doing? Yeah, it's was really interesting, Lance. I think what we're seeing across our clients is that there's the sort of three ways of doing work now. There's work that machines do, there's work that people do, and there's this new thing that we're calling digital workers, which are basically machines that are trained by humans to do human tasks, which are done on machines. So they're not uh, trying to become uh, intelligence and pass the Turing test, you know, the famous Alan Turing test, which is uh, if you're talking to something behind a screen, you can't tell whether it's a person or a human. I think so many phone calls I have, I'm pretty sure I'm talking to computers. Well, all exactly, the time. so we know that, yeah. <laughs> but in the background, there's actually a lot of work that, uh, that people were doing, which are better off for machines to do. And I think what we're seeing now is this idea that you can separate skills and tasks and, and work. And you can take jobs apart into saying what part of that job is good for people to do, what good is, is for a machine to do. And if we can get the people who do the work to train the machines rather than sort of technical and super techie guys, we're actually democratizing that automation. So I think what AI and robotics, if it's done correctly, it can actually empower the human workforce to build their own set of digital co-workers. And they feel comfortable in their presence because they're actually working for them. And I don't know if you know the word ro uh, robot comes from robato, which is yes. uh, a Czechoslovakian word for uh, to be enslaved. Um, and yes, exactly. <laughs> but uh, we don't expect the robots we to don't enslave know. us. Exactly. No, that's not where we're Exactly. Expecting. And I think in the, in the, in the modern uh, enterprises that, that we're seeing really embrace this topic, they're starting to segment work by who's best place to do that. And then freeing up the human cap capital to do things that humans are really good at. And I think that's the key to all of this, is if we try and put the human in the robot, and that was, I think that was one of your sayings, yeah. Leslie. Yes. Yes. Um, then, then is that the right thing to do? Take the robot out of the human, which is, again, one of Leslie's sayings. I think that's more akin to where we are now. And that's where the real value is, is people and, and robots working together 
and feeling that they're, they're invested in their co-workers. And you're not talking about physical robots. You're talking about process automation. You're talking about uh, uh, algorithms. You're talking about systems that have some of this built in. Yes. Um, Pam, when you walk into a company, you, know, you work for Avanad, and uh, when you're talking to maybe a CIO, uh, you know, how do you explain to them the alignment of, of AI and these algorithms and processes with what they're already doing? I think a good way of doing that is, you know, just building on what Pat said, is giving them scenarios or real life examples of how these two things are coming together. You know, so for example, we're working with a telecommunications company, the contact center, you know, and as Pat says and Leslie has said, you know, we've been talking to them about how we can use the digital worker or the robots to actually take some of the more simple tasks away from the agent. Um, and Lance, as you just said, you know, sometimes you feel you're always talking to a robot, you know, but, and maybe there are. And that allows the contact centre agent to be able to handle more of the complex right. queries that are coming through. But then you can also use the, the virtual agent to feed into that human agent ideas that will enhance the kind of conversation that they're having with the person at the other end. Is that also well. just curious, because I, I have a lot of conversations on the computer with chatbots, uh, and I'm never sure, honestly, if that is uh, uh, an algorithm or if it's a person. Do you, in your experience, is that mostly an algorithm, at, or does it that handover you're talking about, does that usually happen in that text conversation? It can absolutely happen in the conversation, yeah. yeah. So it, it just sort of, as, as you know, we're thinking through, is that, Leslie, is that at some point, uh, as you're kind of building that process out, is there a structured way that people have to think about uh, algorithm handle, algorithm handle, oh, okay, that is definitely yeah. the moment to switch to human? The, at the moment, these technologies are being used for relatively simple tasks and simple questions in the chatbot example. Um, fairly s standardized processes uh, where uh, we, we know what the question is and we know what the answer is and it's getting more complex, it's being able to deal with more complex interactions uh, over the next couple of years, essentially, as the technology improves and as our understanding of what it takes to, to get there. So, uh, for example, robotic process automation, which is uh, automation at its simplest, deals with very repetitive tasks, at high volume, volume, where you're using structured data, um, you've, you've got a rules base, for the actions, and then it can produce a, a correct answer. Um, and that limits what you can actually automate. The good news is to humans is that most of those tasks you just don't want to do. I mean, there's a right. great cartoon I saw the other day of a man uh, talking to his boss and saying, um, I feel under threat from these robots. And he said, don't worry about it. He said, uh, we've offered your job to the robots and they don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Robotic process automation is, is very interesting in that respect. And I, I think uh, w when you then start looking at more sophisticated cognitive automation technologies, we're, we're off, not into AI at the moment in businesses. Uh, interestingly, uh, I could talk about that later. Um, you know, th th we're going to uh, amplify and augment the ability of these machines to do things that those workers could have done, but probably don't want to do in the future.